Hello and welcome to Science Chomp. Today we're going to be looking at Thomson's cathode ray tube experiment. Now before we properly look into this, we need to rewind a little bit and think about uh, Dalton's atomic theory. This was around uh, 1805 and he mentioned as part of his atomic theory that all matter is composed of atoms and that the atoms themselves are indivisible. You can't get any smaller. They thought that atoms were more like solid spheres, kind of like marbles or billiard balls. Now in 1897, Thomson changed all of this by experimenting with cathode rays. He had a setup which looks a little bit like this. Now this is just a glass um, piece of equipment. You can't call it really a tube, but you know, it is cathode ray tube. It's a little bit like a, a round bottom flask. Um, and what he's got here are a couple of electrodes. The cathode is the negative electrode and it's connected to the negative terminal of your power supply. And the positive terminal of the power supply is connected to the anode, which is the positive uh, terminal. Now what they've done is they've sucked all of the air out of it, creating a vacuum. And if you turn the lights on and you turn the switch on, what you'll find is this beam which goes across much like a laser, perfectly horizontally. This is what they knew as a cathode ray because it comes from the cathode side of things. Now, he was a clever man and he was experimenting and he found that if you have some charged plates, okay, so you've got a positively charged plate here, negatively charged plate there, he found that the cathode ray itself would deflect kind of like that, okay? Now this automatically tells us that the cathode ray itself is negatively charged because it's attracted to the positive plate. Okay? And incidentally, this deflection can be measured. Okay, so they measure the angle. But before they do that, what 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 he did was he also played around with magnetism. And he found if he had like a north pole out here. And if you can imagine the South Pole behind this, kind of like a three-dimensional sort of thing, the beam would go the other way, it'd deflect the other way. So what he did was he tweaked it and he played around with it. And um, he found that um, by playing around with the electric field and the magnetic field, he was able to determine something called the charge to mass ratio. So obviously he had to measure the the angle of deflection and how far it traveled as well. I'm going to put the equation for that down below in case you're interested, but for the purposes of this, let's not, let's just move forward. And he found that the charge to mass ratio was minus 1.76 times 10 to the 8 coulombs per gram. This tells us that the cathode ray itself is much, much, much smaller than the smallest known atom, which is hydrogen, okay? In fact, it's over a thousand times smaller, okay? So he found two things. First of all, it's negatively charged. Secondly, it's much smaller than an atom, therefore it is subatomic. So what in fact this was, was an electron, okay? That led on to something known as the plum pudding model of the atom. So let's have a look at this. Okay, if you don't know what a plum pudding is, put it into Google and you'll see a picture. But ultimately, you have something which is like this. Um, okay, we're talking about the atom now. You've got electrons like this just floating around inside and it's all held together by this positively charged zone. Because overall, uh, even though the cathode rays themselves, or rather the electrons we should call them now, were negative, the overall atom was still neutral, which meant that there was still a positive um, factor in all of this. Of course, this was proven to be wrong uh, later on, but that's basically Thomson's cathode ray tube experiment. Thank you very much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you uh, in the next video.